Hi guys, I have been working as a data scientist from last 10 years and during that tenure I have worked with multiple data scientists with different years of experience. But I have watched one common pattern within people with 0 to 3 years of experience in data science and there are some common mistakes which they do when they work on data science project. Hi, my name is Rohit and in today's video I am going to share with you 7 common mistakes done by data science aspirants while working on data science projects. Let's get started. So the first mistake is most of the people when they work on say regression or a classification problem, they would usually start with linear regression model or a logistic regression model. And I have seen this mistake even with people who are going through our interview preparation program and working on large data sets. So they usually start their model building using these linear models. Say I would say I would tell you that when you work on the data sets, large data sets or industrial data sets, you are not very sure whether there is a linear relationship between input and output or there is a non-linear relationship. So obviously you can start with linear models and then go on to build non-linear models. But if you are going to end up building just one or two models, what I would recommend is you can start with non-linear models itself because non-linear models can model linear as well as non-linear patterns between input and output. So you can definitely start with models like random forest, XGBoost, those kind of models instead of starting with linear regression or logistic regression model. At the same time, don't start with neural nets, those kind of models as well. It's not really needed. Unless you are working with image data, then you have to switch to CNN. So first common mistake is starting with linear models. So don't do that. You can start with non-linear models if you are going to build just one or two different kind of models on that data set. The second mistake is not applying feature scaling in a right way. So for example, you are going to work on linear regression or logistic regression model, right? Then those models, for those models, it is better to scale your features before building the model. So it's not like must to have step, but it is a recommended step. So when you do feature scaling, I have seen that many people, what they do is they apply feature scaling or fit transform in the scaling on whole data set. So don't do that. You have to apply fit transform on your training data set and on your testing data set only apply transform. Don't fit your scaler on testing data sets as well, because if you have to kind of create a real world scenario where you don't get time or you don't get opportunity to fit your scaler on the data in production, right? then you have to make sure that you are not applying fit operation on your test data. So don't apply fit transform on train and test. On train, you have to apply fit transform and on test, you have to apply only transform when it comes down to scaling your data set. Only then you would be creating real world kind of a scenario when you evaluate your model on your test data. This is the second mistake. The third mistake and kind of a similar mistake is when you are working on text data set. So let's say you are building a TFID of features on your text data set for building some classification model. So again, what many people which are like kind of beginning their career in data science, they would do is they would fit TFID of data set or they would fit TFID of model on whole data set. Again, don't do that mistake because if you want to evaluate your model on your test data set in a right way, you have to consider scenarios where your words are not seen by your TFID of feature model. So in that case, how your model performs. So if you want to create a good evaluation, a evaluation which is similar to the evaluation of the model in production. Then again, when you train your TFID of model, train it only on your training data. So you have to apply fit transform function in the TFID of feature creation only on training data, not on test data. On test data, just use the TFID of model which you have trained on training data and apply the transform function for creating the features. This is the third mistake many people do. And as per my recommendation, just go ahead and apply fit transform only on training data and not on whole data set. Now let's discuss about the fourth mistake, fourth common mistake. So this is related to removing outliers. So all of us know that we can remove outliers using interquartile range, right? So anything which is above say Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR or anything which is less than Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR is potential outlier. But you have to get that these values are potential outliers. Those are not definite outliers. So for example, if you are getting temperature data and say most of the data points that you have are in the range of 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, but you might got some data points related to some cities where temperature is highest and that might, those values might be in the range of say 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. So if you apply the IQR range method on this particular data set for detecting outliers, you might get those values as outliers because your most of the values are in the range of 10 to 20 degrees. But even those values which are in the range of 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, 
are not outliers because outliers are the values which are getting created due to some mistake in measurement or those values are not representing actual data so when you detect outliers using iqr range always make sure that you are calling those as a potential outliers and discuss those outliers values with your subject matter experts so when you work in the industry there would be people who have better understanding of that domain better understanding of that data so discuss with them whether these values actually represent outliers and only then think about how to handle those outliers don't straight away go ahead and remove those values which are getting calculated as outliers based on the iqr range don't do that this is the mistake which many people do and you should definitely avoid it okay next mistake i have seen many people do when they work on industrial projects it's they rely only on mean median or mode imputation whenever they have missing values see mean median or mode imputation for imputing missing values is fine if you have less number of missing values so let's say you have some features and you have only 4 to 5% missing values on those features then you can definitely go ahead and use simple imputation methods for imputing those missing values but let's say you have a feature which is very important feature from that domain perspective and you are for example trying to predict whether someone has diabetes or not and you are getting import information related to say cholesterol or information related to bmi or information related to blood pressure which might be important parameters for predicting whether someone has diabetes or not and say 30% of the data points are missing for that particular feature then in that case don't go ahead with mean median or mode imputation those kind of simple methods you should always think of can i use other features that i have can i use other data points that i have for better imputation of the missing values so again discuss with the domain experts so are there any other data points which i can use for better predicting for better imputing the missing values which i have specifically when you have large number of missing values in features which are very very important because i have seen that many people still they go ahead and do mean median imputation and that is going to basically change completely change the distribution of your data and you might get very poor results on your machine learning model so this is the common mistake all of you should definitely avoid the next common mistake is specifically related to the classification problems when people are getting imbalanced data set so what is imbalanced data set so let's say you are working on building a model for predicting whether someone has cancer or not and in your data set 99% people are not having cancer and only 1% people are having cancer okay that's the kind of data you have so if you check the balance of the classes it's 1 as to 99 so you have 99 times more data related to people not having cancer so if you build your classification model now on this data set and if you use accuracy as the single metric for evaluating your model let's say that this model is predicting that everyone is not having cancer so it is just predicting class 0 it is just predicting people not having cancer for every data point that you are giving it then you might get and if you are using accuracy for evaluating the model then you might get that all 100 people let's say in your test data set are not having cancer that kind of prediction and in your test data set you have only say one person which, which is having cancer if you calculate the accuracy of this model it would be still 99% accurate because in 99% cases it is able to predict whether someone has cancer or not in an accurate way but it is missing all the cases where people have cancer it is not able to predict even one case accurately where people have cancer it is not able to predict that that's the reason why you are building this machine learning model so specifically when you have imbalanced data set don't trust accuracy metric always look at precision and recall for every class and then accordingly take your decision with respect to how your machine learning model is performing so definitely avoid this mistake now the last mistake which i am going to share this might be applicable for some people who are having some experience in data science as well and i would tell you what happens is sometimes you get the data set you build your model and let's say that you are not getting acceptable results on your data what would happen is people would spend lot of time in working on hyperparameter tuning or trying different machine learning models say so i am not saying that using different machine learning models or using hyperparameter tuning is not going to improve your results it is definitely going to improve your results but lot of improvement if you want a step improvement in your results like a sudden jump of like 10 to 15% in some metric that you are evaluating right then that is in most of the cases going to happen by using better features so always think about can i add some other features in this model to give that model more information related to that particular task which you are automating so that its results would be much much better so always think of adding more features which are relevant to that particular problem statement rather than just doing lot of hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning using better models different models is definitely useful but in most of the cases based on my experience i would tell you what would bring step change in the results is including better features identifying better features 
so definitely spend a lot of time in that and that can happen only if you spend lot of time with subject matter experts people who understand that data people who understand that domain and process so spend time with them which other information might be useful in building that model get that information include that information in your model that would definitely give you step change in the results so i hope based on these seven mistakes you are clear now what kind of common mistakes with many people would do when they start their career in data science so make sure that you don't do these mistakes avoid these mistakes when you are working as a data scientist thanks for watching the video and i will see you in the next one bye bye